Everyone knows what fear is like, right? How many of you have had something that you feared, whether you were little or maybe now you fear something? Yeah, it could be. Some people have a fear of spiders. Some have a fear of snakes. I'm not going to mention any names, Pastor John. Um, some have a fear of, of heights or of flying. There are so many fears that people have. I can remember as a child being afraid of the dark. Now, I'm not afraid of the dark anymore, so don't worry about it. Don't shut the lights off, though, please. We'll be okay. But I can remember where we lived. We lived down this steep hill. There were no other houses around us. Our, our house was surrounded by woods, and there was a set of railroad tracks that ran behind the house. And mom would always say, listen, be careful, because on those trains, the hobos used to jump on the trains and go from place to place. And she said they could be dangerous. So I'm like, oh, great. What is she telling us this for? I mean, you have nightmares of that stuff, right? Of some guy looking in your window. Oh, the scary stuff. But according to the dictionary, fear is defined as an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that some, someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Now, there are two kinds of fears, right? There's good fear and there's bad fear. Good fear keeps us from driving down the highway at 100 miles an hour. Now, I'm going to look around. How many people have done that before? <laughs> I knew it. And I knew you were going to be right there. Well, there should also be the fear of that guy with the red lights on the back of his car coming, or on top of his car coming to get you. Or that same fear of picking up like you're going through the woods and you see a cute little snake and it turns out to be a rattlesnake and you shouldn't pick them up, by the way. But then there's a the bad fear that paralyzes us and it keeps us from doing things that we could do or things that we should do. And Satan likes to use our fears against us to distract us and control us. And that fear can be dis uh, debilitating, and it can get sometimes to the point that we can think of nothing else about than what he's doing to us. Now, you can't see this. I don't know why it's even here. Satan likes to use deceptions and lies. He's the master of that, right? And he always uses those lies to trap us. Now, can you see this at all? There's a mousetrap up here. Can you see it? Oh, great. I'll move it a little bit. If I get... Hey, Steve, you want to come up? Can you see it now? Oh, that's so cool. So, so say, <laughs> I'm not using my finger, okay? I, I'd like to use yours, though, Steve. No? Joe? No? <laughs> but Satan likes to do that, right? He likes to trap us. He likes to make things look like they're really good. That's what he does. It's a lie. And then we, we see that, and we take the bait, and what happens you jumped. <laughs> I saw her jump. But that's what happens, right? It gets a hold of us. And, and a lot of times, it controls us. It keeps us, us in that one spot, away from the truth and away from God. And it can destroy us, is what that fear can do. I'm going to put it back over there and see if you want to play with it later, we can. How is, here's how Satan uses fear against us. I've got a, a slide I want to show you. This is what he does. He gives us false evidence appearing real. Do you, do you believe that? All the time, doesn't he? Okay, we know him as the master liar and the master deceiver and manipulator. I have another name for him. I like to call him a jerk because that's what he is, right? Because that's what he wants to do. He wants to make us believe things that are not true, and he wants to separate us from God. And he'll stop at nothing to make us question our beliefs and our faith in Christ and make us take our focus completely off of God. There are three ways that Satan uses that fear. The first one is by trying to get us to worry about things in the future, what may happen tomorrow or next week. When our focus is on the future, though, and what might happen, we're not living in the present like God wants us to. You know, God directs our days, right? We know that he's got special plans for us today if we allow him to show them to us, right? But Satan doesn't want that. He wants us to worry about things down the road, things that could happen. May not happen, but things that could happen. When our focus is on our worries and fears about what tomorrow might bring, we miss all that God wants to teach us today. Isaiah 41.10 says this, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
So what can we do when Satan throws those fears at us? We can ask God to help us live in the moment, right? And to know that whatever he's got planned for us today is the best thing. Because we can't, we can't rely on ourselves. Uh, living on our own. Trying to do things our way. Listen to those words again. How calming those words are. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Doesn't that put your mind and heart at ease? We need to remember those words when we're facing a fear. When Satan gives us those fears, recall that. Recall what he's telling us here. I'm with you. You're not alone. Don't trust him. Don't listen to him. I'm right here with you and walking with you this whole time. And we need to also ask God to to help us not to fall into those traps over and over because we do that, don't we? We fall into the same traps. That's what Satan, he's like, he pushes those buttons on us, right? He knows that we've been afraid about something before and I'm not going to reload it and I'm not going to redo it. But he does that. I'm chicken, right? But he does that. He keeps on trapping us in things over and over. And it's until we put a stop to it, until we say, get behind me, Satan. I'm not falling for that again. He'll keep on doing it. We need to trust God. Another way Satan is using that fear to distract us is uh, things that we may fear. We forget to praise God when we're thinking on things that may happen. Satan hates it when we praise God. So why wouldn't he want us to keep our focus on fear and worrying instead of praising God? Psalm 42, 5 says this. Why, my soul, are you downcast? I just heard this verse. Where's Ann? Ann just read this. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will, I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So what can we do? When he tries to get us to take our focus and praise off of God, we can ask God to help us to recognize the blessings in the circumstances that we're facing right now. And I don't know what anybody is facing right now. I don't know what you're dealing with in life. But let me tell you, whatever you're going through, God will help you through it if you trust him. Satan likes to trick us into believing that worrying gives us some kind of control over our circumstances. And the truth is, we're never really in control. We may tell ourselves that we are, and sometimes we feel like we're in control of our circumstances, but it's not the truth. We don't even have the power to give our, to have breath, right? God gives us that every day, doesn't he? Every day that we have, every day that we wake up, and the breath in our lungs is a gift from God. And we need to thank him for that breath that he gives us for the day that he has planned for us and for the opportunities he's going to open up to us to use us that day. This morning we're going to continue in our series on fear not as we look at the life of Moses and the fears that he faced. He was was really scared. Pastor John was just talking to the kids about that. God asked him to do something really big and he was scared to death. Put yourself in that position. Would you have been afraid? How many of you would have been afraid? I would have been scared to death. Well, let me just give you some background before we jump into um, where we want to start today. Our story picks up where Moses had killed the Egyptian and he fled to Midian where he met Jethro and he married his daughter Zipporah and they had a son named Gershom. Now one day Moses was tending uh, Jethro's flock by Horeb, the mountain of God, and he saw up on the mountain, he saw this burning bush, but he saw that there was fire in this bush, but the bush was not burning up, and he went, I'm going to go check that out. I want to see what's happening there. So he did. He went over, and what do you think happened? You know the story, right? God spoke to him from that burning bush. See, God had seen his people in slavery and how they were suffering so badly, And he planned, he had a plan all along to use Moses. Now here's Moses going, no way. God had a plan. But God also equipped Moses for what he asked him to do. And that's what we need to remember. If God is asking you to do something, he's equipping you. He's going to give you what you need to help you through that, through that fear that you have. See, Moses had four fears. His first fear was, who am I? 
Exodus 3.11 says, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? In other words, he was saying, I'm small. I'm nobody. How can I do this? This is too big for me. And I love how God calmed his fear. He gave him five simple words. And these are five simple words that we can use in our life every single day. I will be with you. Whatever you're going through today, know that God will be with you, that you can trust him to be with you, that you're not facing whatever you're dealing with alone. So is he, here's a question, is God nudging you to do something? Is there somebody that he wants you to step outside of your box to help? You know, God knows that there are so many people. In this world, Candy was just telling us how there's so many people living underneath the bridges, people that are homeless and in need. You know, we take for granted the warm houses that we have and the food that we have, and these people have none of that. And yet, they're content being where they're at. Wow. So are we, are we seeing their needs out there? Are we seeing what they need and helping them? Candy, uh, Walt and Cheryl, Jackie, um, there's so many people in the first service who came to Candy and said, I want to help them. And that's how we are meant to be. We are meant to see people in need, see others in need and help them. See, God already knows who they are, and he wants to use you today. Maybe he's speaking to you and saying, I want you to go and help in some other area. Maybe it's to speak truth into some member of your family's life. Maybe your next door neighbor doesn't know who Jesus is, and he's saying, I want you to do this, and don't be afraid because I'm going to be with you the whole time. You're not going alone. Knowing God was with him should have been enough for Moses. But instead, he had another question. What about, <laughs> I'm worried about the details. He said, what if the Israelites asked me who, what the name of the God is that sent me? And God responded like this, Exodus 3, 14 and 15. He said, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. Does that ever sound familiar to you? Worrying about something in the future like Moses did? How many of you have ever, ever done that? Worrying about something that's coming in the future? <laughs> All the time, right? That's what we do. But why do we worry? I love that song, Why Worry When You Can Pray. Trust Jesus He'll be your stay. Don't be a doubting Thomas. Look fully on his promise. Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? I love that song. There's so much truth and power in that song. And most importantly, we have to remember again, and I've said it once, I'm going to say it twice, and maybe four times, God has equipped us for whatever he's calling us to do. We're not doing it alone. We can't do it on our own, right? Do you think Moses could have gone to Pharaoh and made an impact and, and led those Israelites out of Egypt on his own? Couldn't have done it. There's no way. It's only because God was leading him. God was with him. God was fighting. Uh, he was going before him and preparing Pharaoh's heart. Moses felt like he was inadequate. He was coming up with all kinds of excuses, wasn't he, why he couldn't do it. Exodus 4.10, Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. God responded like this in Exodus 4.11 and 12. Who gave humans their mouth, human beings their mouth? Who made them deaf or mute? Who gave them sight or make them blind? It is I, the Lord. Now go. I will help you and speak and will teach you what to say. Have you ever felt inadequate to do something that God's asked you to do? I was in that boat. Before I go into that story, I just want to say this. The real question that should be gone through our mind should be, why is God choosing me to do this? But more importantly, what does he see in me that he wants to use? That's the way we need to look at things. That's the way we need to see when God is asking us to do something, what, what does he see in me that I don't see in myself? You know, I felt inadequate 
um, at times, many times, I'll be honest. I remember when I was 18 years old and God had called me into ministry. And I knew that he wanted me to. And I started planning where I would go to school. I had my school already lined up. It was going to be in Cedarville College in Ohio. That was all set to go. Everything was falling into place perfectly um, like, like it needed to for me to go away to school in the, co- in the fall. He was directing everything. But then I had this fear come over me that I couldn't do it. Is that a grip of fear that got a hold of me. See, I was afraid of that calling. I was more afraid of letting God down than anything. I felt inadequate, inadequate, I can't say the word, inadequate. You can say it for me, inadequate. So I felt inadequate to be a pastor. I really did. I felt like there is no way. God, you got me mixed up with somebody else. Uh, You must be thinking of someone else. And I said, no. I said, I'm not doing it. I already had an older brother who was in the ministry and a younger brother who was planning to go in the ministry. And I thought, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm going to do things my way. And I ran here to New York. I ran away from God. Like that's even possible, right? Because he's everywhere. But in my mind, that's what I thought I was doing. That's what I was doing. I was leaving all that behind me, leaving God's call behind me. And I was going to do life on my own, my way, my terms. I was already working at Wise Markets uh, back home. And so coming here to this store, it was an easy transfer. I didn't know anybody. Nobody knew me. And I thought, this is awesome. I can have a fresh start. Nobody knows anything about me. I can, I can do things on my own. It wasn't until one night on a dark highway when I was driving up past by the airport I was heading to my second job, and all I could think of was like, it's not working. My, my, my life's not working the way I had planned. It's, I'm getting nowhere. And God grabbed a hold of that steering wheel. And he pulled me over to the side of the road. And this, this big release happened. Like, wow, I'm living in that moment right now again. I said that in the first service. I'm living in it again, but look at, I was, I was weeping. But God wrapped his arms around me right then. See, the whole time when I was up here trying to run from him, run from that call, he was waiting for me. You know, kind of like we do as parents and we're waiting for our kid to come home at night and we're going like this, okay, when are they getting home? But I could picture him doing that. He was waiting for me this whole time. I was ignoring it. I was ignoring what he wanted me to do because it was all about what I wanted. But not that night, not that night, I... I said, I can't believe that you still want to use me. Amazing. So I said, okay, I surrender. I'm going to let you show me what you got for my life. And it was right then when I started preparation for ministry. See, God can use us no matter where we are. No matter where we are, he can use us in so many ways. And he does. We just have to be open and let him lead us. Let him show us what he's got for us. You know, we can go through the rest of the story of Moses and see many times where he was, where he was afraid, but we see even more how God was faithful to Moses all through his whole life. And I say that because I know God is faithful to us too, right? We've seen how he's been faithful in the past, and we know that he is faithful now, and we know that he is very consistent. He's going to be faithful to us in the future, and that we can trust him in all things. One thing I noticed about Moses' life was his fears were calm. God calmed his fears, right? And he was able to help other people with their fears after that. So it's, I think that's what we're called to do too, 
to help people with their fears once we've learned how to conquer ours. See, I think that's the words we need to hear today. Whatever you're going through, no matter what the circumstances that you're dealing with, whatever you've brought here today, you know, we, we say we leave the baggage at the front door. So often we don't. We bring it right in here with us. And you know what the worst part is? We take it right back out with us too. We're not meant to. The altar's always open. The altar's open right now. If you're dealing with some kind of fear, bring it to him today. Leave it right here. You're not meant to take it with you. Call out to him and say, Lord, I can't do this on my own, but I know you can help me through it. And he's going to say those words to you. I will be with you. It's what he always says, right? It's what he always does. So what can we learn from the story of Moses? We learn, one, that God will, God will help us, right? He knew all the excuses that, that Moses had. But he wanted him to learn something from that. He wanted him to build some confidence. So he kept on asking him and telling him what he wanted him to do. He's telling us the same thing today. I'll equip you for what I want you to do. Just trust me. What else can we learn? We can learn just to be ourselves. See, God knows who we are. He created us, right? But remember something else. He's chosen us, and he wants to use each one of us. We just have to let him show us what he wants to do with us. You know, like I said, there's no way I would have ever thought I'd been a pastor. No way in the world. I honestly, I used to tell people at the store, listen, I'm going to die in this place. Kick me to the side and keep on working. And it sounds funny, but, you know, that's what I thought. That's because I was doing it my way. I was relying on myself. God had other plans. And I just praise him for, for what he's doing, what he's done in my life and continues to do for where he's placed me now and is using me now. Another thing we can learn is not to be afraid. I know that's tough sometimes. There's a lot of fears we have, but we need to trust God. We need to know that we're not alone. We need to know that he's going to help us no matter what. As the worship team comes to close, let me just say this. Are you dealing with any fears today? I've asked you that a few minutes ago. If you're dealing with any fears or if God is asking you to do something, what is stopping you from doing it? Why are you so afraid? Are you afraid, worried about what other people will think or what they're going to say? Who cares? Who cares what they say or what they think? I only care what God thinks. Are you with me? Only care what God thinks. I've never had God fail me. Have you? I want to see hands. How many people here have ever had God fail them? Yeah, nobody has, have they? And he's very much the same way today. He never fails us, ever. So today, put your fears in his hand. The altar's open. Do it in your seat, whatever. Whatever he's asking you to do, do it. Don't let that nudging of the Holy Spirit go to waste. Don't push it aside. Don't try to run from it because he'll be waiting for you right at the other end like he was for me. He wants to use you. Are you open to what he wants to do with you?